It is hard to imagine a world without color. So we cannot talk about light without also exploring color. As mentioned in an earlier video, color can mean either human perception or it can convey something about the wavelength of light. In this video on color, we are going to discuss color as it relates to human vision. We are going to talk about two types of light sensors in the human eye. The range of colors humans perceive. Two common ways that machines sense color. Different ways of representing color in vision systems. One primary light sensor on the eye's retina is the cone shown here. There are three different cones in the human eye. All have the same structure, but differ in the photopigments in the section at the top. The three different cones are what give humans color vision. The three photopigments give the cones three different spectral responsivities, short, medium, and long. Sometimes these are called blue, green, and red. Combining the results from all cones gives the eye's spectral responsivity to light versus wavelength. This is the photopic curve that is important in measuring light. The photopic curve peaks at 555 nanometers in the green region, below 700 nanometers and above 390 nanometers. The eye does not detect any light energy. Along with cones, the human eye's retina also has rods that sense light. Since rods are more sensitive than cones, the human vision system uses rods to see in dark conditions. Rods are not differentiated like cones, they all sense the same wavelength range. This is the scotopic response curve. Its peak sensitivity is more toward the blue than the photopic response curve. We have seen the human eye has two types of light sensors, rods and cones. Only the cones provide color information. So that is what we will concentrate on in this video. Now we are going to look further into how the eye can perceive colors using the three different cones. A spectrum of colors can be created from a set of primary colors. The definition of a set of primary colors is that for any one of the primary colors, no combination of the other primary colors can produce that color. The most common primary colors are red, green, and blue, or the RGB triplet. As the three colors begin to merge, you can see they produce other colors. In this scene, the intensities of the individual colors do not vary. If the intensities also varied, still more colors will be created. The range of colors that can be sensed or displayed is called the gamut. This diagram, developed by the Commission Internationale de la Clairage, or International Commission on Illumination, usually just called CIE, shows the gamut of colors perceived by the human eye. This curve was established in 1931. Notice that the axes are labeled X and Y. These are calculated values from the RGB triplet. You don't really need to know the formulas used for those calculations, but if you want more information, see the online paper on optics. The URL is given at the end of this video. One problem with the 1931 chromaticity diagram was that the regions of indistinguishable color change shown by the McAdam ellipses varied widely. In 1976, CIE reformulated the chromaticity diagram to help keep the McAdam ellipses somewhat more consistent in size. The axes are now labeled U prime and V prime and the conversion from RGB to U prime and V prime coordinates is a bit more complex than for the earlier X and Y coordinates. 
For most purposes, the 1931 chromaticity diagram is still used. We will take a brief side trip here to gain some perspective on human vision. The animal shown here is the mantis shrimp. It has two eyes separately movable, with each eye having three pupils. Its cones are configured to detect 12 different wavelengths, extending beyond visible light, that is visible to humans, into the ultraviolet and infrared region. This means the mantis shrimp sees a wider gamut of colors than humans and with a superior ability to differentiate colors. You can see that a range of colors can be sensed or perceived with this just three color sensors. Later, you will see that a range of perceived colors can be created using just three colors. Colors can also be created by mixing other colors. You can recognize that if light energy with mostly green wavelengths is viewed, it will look green. When light is principally one wavelength range, it is a monomer or single color. You probably learned in kindergarten that if you mix yellow and blue, you get green. So a combination of yellow light and blue light looks green. But there is no green component to the light energy. This is an example of a metamer. The apparent color is not necessarily present. Two colors can be perceived as being similar even though their light spectrum is very different. Now, let's look at how primary colors are used in imaging. Here is a common single chip color image sensor used in cameras. Each sensing element or pixel is overlaid with a color filter. The color filters are arranged in the Bayer pattern named after the inventor of the pattern. There are alternating rows of filters. One row has alternating red and green filters. The adjacent row has alternating green and blue filters. Image processing interpolates color information for every pixel so that a green pixel has a red, green, and blue value, and the blue and red pixels also have three values. Typical filter passbands for the red, green, and blue filters are shown here. Another way that color cameras are made is using three image sensors and a prism to split the three colors into three different paths. Because the color filters in the prism are made using a different technique than the ones for single chip camera, their spectral passbands tend to be steeper. Here is the CIE chromaticity diagram. We can place our red, green, and blue primary colors onto this diagram. These three points define a triangle. The three primary colors can, by being mixed in some proportion, represent any color within this triangle. The triangle represents the gamut of colors achievable with the chosen primary colors. Colors outside the triangle cannot be represented. You can appreciate that our two different color cameras with their different types of filters will have somewhat different color gamuts. Now we should explore the common color system used in machine vision. We will continue with the RGB system and then expand it to other color systems. The three colors, red, green, and blue, can be represented as three color axes. These axes, since they are limited in range, form a cube, the RGB cube. The origin, where red, green, and blue are all zero, gives the color black. At the opposite diagonal, where all three colors are maximum, is white. 
Because it starts with black and adds color, the RGB system is called an additive color system. RGB is common for cameras and displays, as well as other color applications. The additive color system is very useful, but not for all situations. Take printers, for example. Printers start with white paper. They need to suppress or subtract color, not add it. Here are three colors, cyan, yellow, and magenta. Cyan consists of blue and green, but no red. Against a white background, it filters out red and is considered minus red. Yellow consists of red and green, but no blue. Against a white background, it filters out blue and is considered minus blue. Magenta consists of red and blue, but no green. Add a white background, and it filters out green and is considered minus green. Combined, the three colors can represent a wide gamut of actual colors. Because cyan, yellow, and magenta, or CYM, removes colors from white, it is a subtractive color system. Because of the pigments in printing inks, the three colors, when combined, produce a poor black color. So printers add black to the colors, and the system becomes CYMK, where K stands for black. The CYM system also produces a cube. The origin is in white, and the axes are cyan, yellow, and magenta. The diagonal represents the transition from white to black. You might notice the symmetry and complementary form of the RGB and CYM cubes. In fact, we can combine them into one color cube, where each edge of the cube is one of the six colors, and the diagonal runs from black to white. There are other color spaces used in machine vision, such as the HSI space, which stands for hue, saturation, and intensity. Hue is the dominant color. Saturation is the purity of the color. A pure or highly saturated color might consist of a single wavelength. A lightly saturated color appears as a pastel color. Intensity is a measure of the total intensity of the light energy, considering all wavelengths in the color. There are similar color spaces, including HSV, where the calculations are somewhat different than for HSI. In colorimetry, painting, and printing, it is often necessary to judge how close a color is to the target or specify color. The L star, A star, B star color space has been designed for that purpose. Within a constant given distance in the color space, any color appears identical to the human eye. You have covered some interesting and important topics in this video on color how the human eye senses color, the color gamut for human vision, and for color systems used in machine vision. Two ways machine vision senses color, the RGB and CYM color systems, other color systems used in machine vision. Now you are ready to view the video on how light is measured. For more information on light, as well as many other related topics that you will find useful in your work in machine vision, download the paper Optics for Machine Vision Practitioners at the URL shown here.